Welcome to my garden. So for today's lesson, we're looking at complementary colors and I couldn't think of a better subject matter than my tomato plants. Something really nice about hanging out in the garden and working in the garden, you it's full of inspiration. So I'm gonna work on these tomato plants for our botanical uh, complementary color drawing for today. Just a little note about my setup. First of all, I'm referring to The Art of Botanical Drawing, an Introductory Guide by Agath Ravette Havermans. I've done some reference sketches to become familiar with my subject matter. And I'm using my plein air setup that I use for oil painting. I have my uh, umbrella to make sure that my uh, painting area is in shadow. Keep in mind that you want to make sure that your, your supplies are in shadow um, because the bright light shining off of the paper is going to change the way color appears to you. So for my setup, I have my, my watercolors. I have water. I keep a large jar of water and then I fill the little jars. That way it's easy to refresh my water. I have my brushes, pencils, and I'll start by doing a light pencil sketch. And I will be drawing these tomatoes right here. The light on those tomatoes is perfect. See how we have a direct sunlight. We have a core shadow, cast shadow. All those things are going to add to describing exactly how that tomato looks. So as always, I'm gonna start with just a really quick sketch. As with my earlier painting, I started with a very light wash as an underpainting. I've delineated on the tomatoes where I want those highlights to remain so I don't accidentally go in there and lose the white spaces. So you can always just go in and Make sure you mark off those areas where you want to maintain your lights. I'm just going in with a light wash. And I'm using a mixture of the Windsor yellow and the Windsor red.
here I'm going to here I've mixed up very light sap green and yellow ochre at this point I'm not worried about the shadows on the stalks I'm just putting in the underpainting of a light tone. This is where the stalk branches off. You do want to pay attention to the change in direction of the stalk. Later you'll plan on exactly what value you use to indicate that change in direction. Okay, here we are on step three. With step three, I will slowly, while adding water to my mixture, slowly increase in a circular motion, moving around the tomato. I have a shadow coming off of here, so I'll put that in. Continue to move around the tomato as I get to the bottom, progressively adding less water. There's a lot of reflected light going on around the garden. 
So taking the shadows and reflected light into consideration and moving around the tomato still while following the shape of the tomato in a circular motion, but also paying attention to some of this reflected light. I want to make sure I maintain that round shape. Don't cut across. I know I'm tempted to go along that branch, but I should pay attention to allow some hard and soft edges. Don't follow the branch, as tempting as it is, but to maintain this spherical shape as I move around my tomato to maintain that sphere. Back around the back end of the tomato. In this back edge just by adding water. Soften the back edge of the tomato. You have a nice deep red shadow coming off of this tomato here. This is where I see a hard edge. So as you're doing this, you're paying attention to your hard and soft edges without flattening the shape, of course. So watch that I don't flatten that. So I could go in and pick up. up some of that color. At this point you want to keep everything soft. I'm going in with a wet, clean brush and just lifting up the paint. Okay, so while the tomatoes are drying, I went ahead and I mixed up two batches of green. One is for the mid-tone, which is a mixture of yellow ochre and sap green. And the other green is a mixture of sap green and ultramarine blue. And that would be for the shadow areas. So I'm looking at my 
stalk. And go up slowly. Try to start to put in the mid-tone range that is going to run right along the highlight areas. Not wanting to eliminate my highlights, leaving my whites white. And just building up the volume of the leaf. I can see the volume of this mid-tone because it's on the shadow side, it's catching the sun. I'm gonna watch that and stay with it. And then we have the sun wrapping around the leaf and a couple of shadow areas in the vein here. And there's some volume around the other side of the leaf. Just run this down. I'm going to decide what is the shadow side, what is the light side. I still have the light coming from the right. So very carefully, I will go down along the left side of the stalk and leave the right side with the lighter value. So I'm going to look at that stalk and see what happens the way the sun is hitting it. It casts a shadow on the left side of the stalk. Goes up. And this is where the stalk breaks off. Tension here with what's happening with this, the leaf with the sun shining through. So being cautious as to the quantity of saturation I'm using here. Okay, for the sake of keeping these demos 
uh, short and not too long. I don't want to uh, put you to sleep. I'm going to just quickly mix up my dark, darkest red color. And I'm going to use my angled brush. And here's where I'm going to go into the tomato uh, where it has dried. And offer a more saturated shadow area. I'll just go in and put in some shadows. This tomato touches that tomato. While I do this, I'm being really careful to leave the the really nice ref reflective light areas on the tomato. Of course, I'm looking at my, this is a large brush. I might have to go in with a smaller brush. And I'll soften this as it moves around the tomato here. I want that to soften that edge. You can see how you can use that angle brush and slowly twist it. You can start with a flat edge and then as I twist it, just to soften that edge as you move around the tomato. And I would go in with my brush, just pick up some edges, clean up these edges, keep them soft with clean water. So I'll go down in the tomato beneath that, do the same. It's a nice shadow. Cast from the stem. It's going down into the shadow side of the tomato. I'm going to move up with this. Still a lot of reflective light in this area. Keep this as soft as I can. I might add some water. And just bring this shadow side around. With my angled brush. I'll allow this more saturated color to go across the bottom. And then that's where you can see how that leaving those white areas in the bottom helped a little bit to maintain that reflected light. I'll come in here with more shadow areas. We're wet on wet here, so that'll soften. For the top part of the tomato, I'm going to do a little bit of a glaze of a warm, a warm uh, yellow orange, leaving my white highlights. Might be a little bit too red. Just brushing in there to a little bit, little bit more of the yellow, Maybe that yellow ochre. So I'm pulling in yellow ochre and Windsor yellow. Might be a little heavy-handed. I could always pick it up with wet with some water. Add a little water, let it blend. And allow a little bit more the warm red to get in there. Once again, moving in the direction of the tomato. Angled brushes are great for 
working on edges. The, um, there's some reflective light here, and once again, I don't want to flatten this tomato. So I'm going to go in with just a real soft, the less saturated area of paint just to soften this edge so it doesn't flatten the tomato. And what I might do for my shadow area on that tomato is just add a very, very little bit of my dark green mixture to indicate the shadow. another shadow cut coming over here from a leaf shape and that shadow area moves down into the shadow side of the tomato. bring some of that shadow into the tomato in the background. Once again, I'm mixing a little bit of the, gr the darker green mixture to give that sense that it's a shadow. And then you would go into blend this a little bit just to soften it. Keep in mind as I do this, I'm always reserving my light areas, my light fields. Okay, then for your stem, for the shadow area, I did have that dark blue-green mixture. It was a mixture of sap green and ultramarine blue. Deep green, and I'm looking at my plants and just going down, just indicating shadow. That will help punch some of your details. tomato casts a shadow on the stalk. So I'll come over and put that in. This gives us a sense of the volume of the stalk. Whenever you have a really good light source, it allow this shadow to wrap around the stalk. Anything you can do, so when you have a cast shadow, cast it on something, it will cast its shape. It will help to define the shape. So notice with the stalk, if I want the stalk to feel round, then I will create a shadow that looks round. If we go into the details in those leaves, we have the coming in to the center. You can round that 
Some of the details that you may need to do can be done with a sharp colored pencil. I'm working on eight by 10 watercolor paper, so you can see this is pretty small. Uh, so you might, depending on the scale you're working with the detail work, you're really getting in and using small brushes for this detail work. Or colored pencils are also okay. Then the only area that needs to be resolved is I have shadow cutting across this stalk, which will help to define it. And then moving along here. And then the light hits a good part of the other stalk. So I'm going to mix up some, keeping some yellow ochre and sap green. So I can maintain that warm feeling. Make it a clean brush and then just run across. To restate I might be getting a little bit too thick there too dark I do like the transparency so if I think I'm getting a little too dark I could go in with water and lift up because we we do want to feel that translucency these uh, tomato stalks are very thin so we don't want to get too opaque which is really I think watercolor is a tremendous ma uh, material to use for botanical drawing because a lot in nature uh, is full of water, so you're going to see a lot of transparency in nature. So as sun goes through leaves and goes through stems, you really want to be able to see that. So I have to double check my work. I have to put some other details in, shadows in here. Uh, this, this part of the painting, we're at the last stage. We're putting in shadows, highlights. If you have to go in and wipe out some areas. I, I seem to have lost the stock that goes into, this can use some refinement, but I will go and do that on my own. I won't have you sit through it. Uh, give yourself a good two to three hours to work on these projects. Uh, give yourself 30 minutes to an hour to set up, to set up your scene. Give yourself another hour, hour and a half to slowly put in the layers and another 30 minutes to an hour to do refinements. Okay, so that's it for now and I'll go in and touch up with my own details.